Number three, Christian mothers desire to be spiritual guides to her children. A mother should never underestimate the power and influence she has over her children. Our children watch the examples of their mothers and their fathers, but in most cases, the children are around their mothers more than they are around their fathers. So many times, the mothers have the greatest influence on their children's spiritual journey toward God. So a Christian mother should do their best to instill Christ-like qualities into their children's lives. A great biblical example of this comes from our story of Moses again. We know that Moses learned about his people and God according to Acts 7 verse 25. How do you think he learned about his people and God? I believe he learned it from his mother and that she taught it to him in his early childhood. And this teaching stuck with him throughout his life. In the New Testament, Timothy's mother and grandmother had a profound influence on him. We need to remember that Timothy's father was a Greek, and so he certainly would not have taught him anything about the scriptures. So his spiritual upbringing was a direct reflection of his mother and grandmother. Paul talks about this in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Paul informs us that both Lois and Eunice were faithful servants of God. Since they lived their lives for God, their example would influence Timothy to live his life for God. We can know that his mother and his grandmother were teaching him the scriptures throughout his childhood because Paul wrote to Timothy saying, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3 verses 14 through 15. All mothers and fathers alike can learn a great lesson from Jochebed, and also from Eunice and from Lois. We can see how important it is that we teach our children about God early on. They say the most impressionable years of a child is between the ages of three and five. And it is never too early to start teaching your children or grandchildren about God. Whatever you teach them will stick with them for the rest of their lives and will influence how they will live their lives in the future. Let us never forget that our children and our grandchildren look to us as examples which is why there is a great need for us to live a righteous life. For example, if we don't want our children to use foul language, then we shouldn't use foul language. If we don't want our children to drink beer, then we shouldn't have it in our refrigerators. The list could go on and on. But the point is, is that we must practice what we preach. If we don't want to send a mixed message to our kids, then we must not engage in sin while telling our children not to do the same. Because if mom and dad do it, why should they refrain from doing it? So mothers, don't ever underestimate the power of influence you have over your children and the ability that you have to be their spiritual guide. 